Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our time of evening prayer today on Wednesday, the 19th of January. It's on this day that we celebrate the life and witness of Wolfstan, Bishop of Worcester. Born in about the year 1009, Wolfstan's first 25 years after his ordination were spent in the monastery at Worcester. Against his will, though, he was elected Bishop of Worcester in 1062, but went on to prove himself as an able administrator and pastor. He carefully and gently nurtured both church and state through the transition from Saxon to Norman rule, and he died at Worcester on this day in the year 1095. And so we begin our evening prayer with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. There are two appointed psalms today, Psalm number 97 and Psalm number 98. And we begin with Psalm number 97. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him, righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declared his righteousness and all the peoples have seen his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up from the righteous and joy from the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Psalm number 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre and the voice of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Amos chapter 8. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, 
When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and the practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings off the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and every one mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about the sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, it will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and your songs into lamentations. I will bring sackcloth on all loins, and boldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son, at the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. In that day the beautiful young women and the young men shall faint for thirst. Those who swear by Ashima of Samaria and say, As your God lives, O Dan, and as the way of Beersheba lives, they shall fall and never rise again. Here ends our first lesson and our canticle, A Song of Praise. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests, serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessings and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Our second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through to 24. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is well for a man not to touch a woman, but because of cases of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a set time, to devote yourselves to prayer, and then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. This I say by way of concession, not of command. I wish that all were as I myself am, but each has a particular gift from God, one having one kind and another a different kind. To the unmarried and the widows I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am, but if they are not practising self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. To the married I give this command, not I but the Lord, that the wife should not separate from her husband, but if she does separate, let her remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband should not divorce his wife. To the rest I say, I and not the Lord, that if any believer has a wife who is an unbeliever, and she consents to live with him, she should he should not divorce her. And if any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such a case the brother or sister is not bound. It is, it is to peace that God has called you. Wife, for all you know, you must serve your husband. Husband, for all you know, you might save your wife. However, that may be, let each of you lead the life that the Lord has assigned, to which God called you. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? 
Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone of the type of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But obeying the commandments of God is everything. Let each of you remain in the condition in which you were called. Were you a slave when called? Do not be concerned about it. Even if you can gain your freedom, make use of your present condition now more than ever. For whoever was called in the Lord as a slave is a freed person belonging to the Lord, just as whoever was free when called is a slave of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of human masters. In whatever condition you were called, brothers and sisters, there remain with God. Here ends our second lesson and our responsory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. And the Magnificat. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you a ruler over much. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little I will make you ruler over much. And so from the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the Lord. That the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth, let us pray to the Lord. That the church may discover again that unity which is the Father's will, let us pray to the Lord. That the nations of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace, let us pray to the Lord, that the whole creation, groaning in travail, may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God. Let us pray to the Lord, that all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray to the Lord, let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. In our worldwide calendar of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of Juba in the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. In our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we continue this month to pray for the Dufferin Cloyd, Elwi, Estuary and Mountain Mission areas. For Archdeacon Andy, Archdeacon of St Asif, and for Gregory, our Bishop, for all his ministry for and among us. We pray for all those involved in developing, producing and rolling out the vaccine for Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes, for Daniel and all those in prison, and for their families. We pray for Jane, the lead chaplain at the Mylar Hospital, and for the chaplaincy team there, and for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn. We remember before God all those people known to us who are in need of our prayers at this time, those people who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have nobody to pray for them. We remember Louise, Gordon, Harry, Dot, Joshua, Bob, Maldwin, Roy, Mark, Carol, Barbara, Paul, Doreen and Vernon. And we remember those who have died in faith, remembering Anne, Peter and Alison. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And our collect for today. Lord God, who raised up Wolfston to be a bishop among your people and a leader of your church, help us, after his example, to live simply, 
to work diligently and to make your kingdom known. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. And so let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.